are back with another career conversation with Amanda. I have Cheryl here from Draft and Tucker. So welcome, Cheryl. We are going to talk about professional appearance and what that looks like in the workplace. Um, but Cheryl, do you want to introduce yourself and Draft and Tucker? Sure. I'm Cheryl Glover. I am the HR manager with Draft and Tucker. We are a regional firm located um, locally here in Atlanta, but we also have a second office in Albany, Georgia. Um, we are currently at about 100 employees, and we are always looking for great people. So uh, we have fall, spring, and summer internships available. We also do um, summer leadership programs in the summer. So you, if you feel like you're interested in some of those opportunities, be sure to check us out um, on our website. All right. Cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we're talking about professional appearance today in the workplace. So what does professional appearance look like? So I would say um, professional appearance is always a clean, neat, and polished look. Um, it depends on um, the venue, um, but you know, I would say, you know, if you're a student and you're thinking about professional dress in terms of going on an interview, um, I would say, you know, try to wear a dark colored suit. Um, sometimes you may be able to dress um, a little more relaxed, um, uh, business, business casual um, dress code. Um, and you're really not going to know that um, unless you research the company and see what the dress code is. But I would always say to just kind of err on the side of um, conservative you know, professional dress um, for interviews. So again, um, that's in most cases, it's going to be a nice suit um, with a collared shirt um, or, or uh, blouse. Mm -hmm. um, it could be a pantsuit, it could be a skirt suit, or even a, a dress uh, with a corresponding blazer. Um, also, um, you know, nice polished shoes um, that might be um, loafer uh, for men or dress shoes. And then for uh, women, it would be um, a nice heel, closed toe. Um, and, you know, in other settings outside of an interview setting, again, um, let's say you are um, maybe visiting a firm kind of in a more um, casual environment, maybe you're visiting the office or such. Um, Again, you might want to research the firm, see what their uh, bis business uh, or dress code is, and then just try to mirror that in those settings. So in most cases, it's going to be anywhere from um, business professional or um, business casual dress. Yeah, I, I think I have a lot of people who tell me it sort of means how you dress for your day and what you have coming. And, you know, if you're going to meet with clients or you're just in the office for the day and things like that, depending on um, sort of what the nature of your work is, will depend on what appropriate dress there is. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's a quote that's like, uh, if you're never overdressed. You can only be underdressed. Um, so yeah, erring on the side of caution and, and being conservative in, in that regard is, is good to remember. Absolutely. Um, especially again, you know, I can't stress enough um, in an interview setting, if you're not quite sure, um, just always err on the side of conservative because again, um, you can't go wrong that way. Right. Yeah. Neutral colors or dark colors. Um, does it look different in a virtual environment than being in person? Not really. Um, you, you, um, want to make sure that at least from the waist up, you have a nice professional appearance. Um, you might want to consider things like lighting um, and your background for the camera. Um, but other than that, I would say it's, you know, really no different um, in a virtual setting um, as far as, you know, the, pro the professional image that you want to project. So, um, and probably even more so because that camera lens is, you know, like you're right there in that screen. And so um, maybe some things that you want to 
pay special attention to is, you know, just making sure your, your hair is combed the way that you would like it to be. Um, make sure that um, any jewelry that you might, um, might want to wear is on the modest side. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, lighting, background, um, outside noises and distractions. Um, and, you know, one other thing is too, is, um, you know, considering um, a more conservative look, um, you want to kind of steer away from prints, um, mm -hmm. and bright, bold colors um, that may be somewhat of a distraction uh, through the camera lens. Yeah, great. So what are some examples of unprofessional appearances or how would you avoid those? I mean, you talked about prints and loud colors and then, you know, a lot of statement jewelry is not wonderful, but are there any others that you know, it might be common that we've seen? I've seen, um, you know, clothing um, that's, that doesn't fit right. Um, so that's something that you want to pay special attention to. Um, you know, if you are preparing for an interview and maybe you have that one suit that's your interview suit and you haven't worn it in a while, um, you may want to do like a dry run and just try it on. Um, maybe a couple of days ahead of time, just make sure that, that it still fits, you know, um, properly. Mm -hmm. um, and then if not, then that gives, that allows you time to maybe um, go ahead and, and find something else to wear um, for that interview. Also, um, another thing that I've seen is like uh, wrinkled clothing. So you just want to make sure that, you know, you iron um, any shirts, blouses, um, obviously for, um, suits, you're going to want to get those dry clean. Mm -hmm. Um, but yes, I would, I would say that, you know, um, clothing that doesn't quite fit right or, um, wrinkled clothing. I've also seen like chipped nail polish. Okay. Um, and so th those are all things that, um, doesn't really lend well to, you know, pro projecting that, uh, polished image of yourself and putting your uh, best foot forward All right yeah so grooming in addition to what you wear so everything is so how we present ourselves and making sure that we seem like we're well put together and um you know ready to go and to be reliable and everything and it definitely is something that I guess we don't always think about is professional appearance but um when we really take a hard look at what it what it means to be professional in the workplace it, it's definitely included yeah. yeah. And then I would say to um, in a virtual setting, you know, you always want to make well in both in person and virtual setting, you always want to make sure that, you know, um, you have a great attitude and that you're smiling. Um, but um, more importantly, in the virtual setting, um, you might want to, you know, kind of smile in the mirror and kind of look at um, your teeth and just make sure that there's no like food particles or anything like that before you actually get on camera. Um, so that's just a extra tidbit. I always like to check, um, before I join meetings to see what my surroundings look like. And like, I blur my background. I'm just in my office, but still, you know, just to have the focus be on the person that you are speaking with and, and knowing that they are looking directly at you. And like you said, the loud prints or the loud colors, things like that um, are distracting. So it's good mm -hmm. to be able to say, okay, look, this is my face. We're talking and um, yeah, to have the, to have the attention on yourself. Yeah. So um, again, um, you know, you asked if it does it look different in a virtual setting. Um, you just have to make sure that you don't have any distractions um, that's going to, you know, to kind of take away from you um, and you putting your, you know, pro projecting that professional image um, that you want to get across. So, um, you know, make sure that your background is appropriate. If, um, if there's anything that, you, you know, you can declutter to go ahead and do that um, beforehand. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Is there any last advice or thoughts in, in regards to looking professional? Always try to prepare ahead of time. Um, so if you know that um, you have, you know, an interview or, um, you know, an, an appointment, any, any situation where you want to look um, or put your best foot forward and have that um, professional um, look and appearance, um, try to 
give allow yourself enough time to to be prepared. Um, and so one thing um, that I know works for me is um, I will consider, okay, this is what I want to wear. I always try it on the night before. I leave it out so that way, you know, um, when it's time for me to get dressed, you know, I already know what I'm wearing. It's already out. I'm not hunting for anything. I've got, you know, all of my, you know, any jewelry that I intend to wear, um, hosiery, all of those things um, so that I'm not, you know, rushing and, and, and scattered, um, especially in, in an interview setting. You never want to feel rushed. Um, because that's just not going to make for a good interview. You want to maintain that um, poise and confidence about yourself. And um, that's hard if you are, if, you, if you've been uh, stressing on, on the way um, in preparation for the interview. So um, that's my one lasting, lasting thought. Yeah. Go to bed early, get up with enough time to get ready and make sure everything's all set. So yeah, like you said, ironing the night before, making sure that what you're wearing fits, picking it out, um, and then giving your, yourself enough time to get someplace too, so that you're not, you know, rushing and with it being hot outside uh, right now, especially in the summer, you don't want to have to be rushing and then get all hot and uh, flustered before you go in and get into an interview. Um, so yeah, great. Well, thank you so much for talking about professional appearance with us. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. Have a good day.